Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. Today I'll be sharing with you how I built a bomb, challenged a group of civilians to defuse it, and ended up with a new hobby as a lock picker. So let's get into it. So this video is a response to SoFlo Picker, who challenged the community to pick our favourite lock on camera and to tell the story of how we got into lock sport. I'll get to my favourite lock in a little while, but first, let's talk about the bomb I built. For several years now, I've been a guest instructor for Parkour Generations, a movement and fitness training organisation based in London, but with branches across the globe. A few times each year, one of my best mates, Dan Edwards, CEO of the company, invites me to the capital and together we run a dusk till dawn night mission for small groups of athletes who want to be pushed to their limits and beyond. Each mission has a different theme and towards the end of last year, before we were plunged back into lockdown, we ran an event which we called Escape the City. Filmmaker Charlotte Miles of Ironheart Studios followed the intrepid group throughout the night and documented the challenges they faced, which involved a mix of physical and mental obstacles. So, you probably have no idea what you're about to experience. Some information for you then. Tonight, you're tasked with foiling an imminent terrorist threat facing London. Criminal mastermind Boris Cunning has planted a biological dirty bomb and the team has been exposed to the deadly pathogen whilst attempting to defuse the device. You'll be split into three teams, intel, assault and infiltration. Together, you'll learn relevant skills which will help you on this mission and keep your team alive. The antidote to heal yourselves is stored within a tightly secured lockbox. You must now traverse the city on foot, seek out a series of hidden caches, solve puzzles which will enable you to gain the sequence needed to render the bomb inert. You'll gain additional intel whilst in the field from Oracle, our eye in the sky, who you can communicate with by means of a burner phone. The fate of the nation is in your hands and time is of the essence. We had a lot of fun and if you want to watch the whole mini documentary I'll put the link in the description. As part of our preparation for the mission I designed and built a suitcase device. This suitcase device which was to hold a deadly nerve agent which looks suspiciously like washing up liquid and I secured it with a state-of-the-art security lock. This lock which looks suspiciously like the kind of acrylic training lock you'd get in a beginner's set from Amazon. At this point I'd never attempted to pick a lock but I needed to learn enough to give the team a briefing so that they could pick it during the mission, access the device and defuse it. I spent a few days on YouTube learning the fundamentals for single pin picking a pin tumbler lock and then I jumped on a train armed with a cheap set of picks, the lock and my DIY dirty bomb. Note to self, travelling to a capital city with a simulation IED is not advisable but thankfully I made it there safely and the event ran smoothly. The team did successfully avoid the device detonating, which wouldn't have resulted in the release of a deadly nerve agent, but would have incurred a 1,000 burpee penalty at the end of what had already been 10 hours of hard training. We came away exhausted, but happy that we'd created another unique training experience. But as I sat on the train heading back home again, I had this little nagging thought that wouldn't go away. Could I now open a real lock? And that was it. The seed had been planted and I set about devouring all I could about picking and bypassing locks. That was back in late October of 2020. And as of now of this recording, it's January 2021, just three months later, and I'm completely hooked. In that time, I've built quite a collection, joined forums, started this YouTube channel, and I try and spend at least some time every day honing my skills. 
I'm on the steepest of learning curves and only at the very beginning of my journey, but I'm loving every minute of it. As to my favourite lock, it's hard to say. Here I'm picking the Abus Titanium 6450. It's a German-made aluminium five-pin lock with all standard key and driver pins. I think the Titanium range are handsome, nicely manufactured locks which give good feedback for beginners. I recently picked up the 8350, which unlike this model, has a removable core and comes packed full of spools and serrated pins, but I haven't gotten open on that one yet. But I'll make a review video once I'm successful. I'm also working my way towards opening one of the American 1100 series. I have a few of them, and they too look and feel great, but so far they're proving elusive too. So I guess it's a good job I didn't use one of those on the suitcase bomb, or we might still be there now. And that's okay, I like the fact that there are still so many locks beyond my reach, and I now have the answer to the question. Can I pick a real-world lock? Well, it depends on the lock. Anyway, that's my origin story, and I wonder, what's yours? If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment perhaps on how you got your start in lock picking, or why not upload your own video and use the hashtag SoFlowPickerGiveaway. Thanks again to SoFlow Picker for this challenge. Thank you for joining me today. And until next time, take good care.